the real world, I don't know when I will ever see God again. Slowly, I open my eyes with Pa's face still lingering in my vision. It is not the face of the gaunt old man the soldiers took away, but the face of the man I once thought of as a god. It was during our trip to Angkor Wat that I first thought Pa was a god. I was only three or four years old then. With my hand in Pa's, we entered the area of Angkor Thom, one of the many temple sites there. The gray towers loomed large before us like stone mountains. On each of the towers, giant faces with magnificent headdresses looked out in different directions over our land. Staring at the faces, I exclaimed, Pa, they look like you. The gods look like you. Pa laughed and walked me into the temple. My eyes could not leave those huge round faces with their almond-shaped eyes, flat noses, and full lips, all of Pa's features. Waking up, I try to hold on to these images of Pa, even as we resume our lives without him. Ma returns to the field, working 12 to 14 hours a day, and leaves Gek behind with Ju. With Gek toddling after him, Ju and I and the other children.
Asia would be in danger if Laos loses its neutral independence. Its own safety runs with the safety of us all, in real neutrality observed by all. I want to make it clear to the American people and to all the world that all we want in Laos is peace, not war. During the war in neighboring Vietnam, U.S. warplanes unleashed 270 million cluster bombs on Laos to cut off enemy supply lines. 80 million of them did not explode, and there have been more than 20,000 more explosives on Laos than it did on Germany and Japan combined in World War II. And blinded at just 16 years old. A friend gave him what looked like a toy bomb. It was a bomb that suddenly was in Bang Kong Village School. The day begins in the playground with a wash in a crater made by an American bomb during the Vietnam War. Then it's time for the first lesson of the day. Million pieces of ordnance on Laos, which makes it the most bombed country. On Laos is the most heavily bombed country and this is in the world per capita. On average, That's bombs were dropped here every eight minutes for nine years. <laughs> the present British proposal of a prompt end of hostilities and prompt negotiation. We are always conscious of the obligation which rests upon all members of the United Nations to seek peaceful solutions to problems of this sort. We hope that others may be equally aware of this responsibility.
don't have a help at home because I don't know how to do it. Something. <laughs> That's right. We have breaking news out of Malaysia. Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin has announced a nationwide lockdown to curb the spread of COVID-19 in the country. It will take effect from Wednesday until the end of the month. Now, this comes after the, the number World of Health cases Organization in Malaysia said the risk of a global spread of the virus was now very high, though containment was still possible. And around the world, countries are facing that this is an evolving situation. Literally every day we learn a little bit more about it. I mean, we have the five individuals in the United States who are left travelers with no time to prepare for its consequences. Striking an agreement with the U.S. government to supply an additional 100 million doses of their COVID-19 vaccine. Meg Terrell joins us now last month. And President Bolsonaro was asked about a record number of coronavirus deaths. So what? I'm bored with that. As what do you want me to do? I can't do it. Because I feel great. I feel like that. And more than the British Medical so Journal. So I think this was a blessing from God that I caught it. This was a blessing in disguise. I caught it. I heard about this drug. I said, let me take it. It was my suggestion. I said, let me take it. The global death toll from COVID has now eclipsed the 2 million mark. The United States tops the list with almost 400,000 lives claimed by the virus.